Hi, my name is Matthew, and I'm an application engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. All 3D Systems Geomagic software can handle mesh data, but one is specialized to manipulate mesh data in a smart way. Geomagic Wrap allows you to repair, clean, and then extract CAD information quickly and at a level beyond other meshing software. I'm going to go over the basic interface and workflow of cleaning up a mesh and wrap, then creating a solid body to export into SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to be using a bicycle helmet for our example that will scan with the Artec AVA. For starters, I'm going to import in a mesh using the import options. While importing, we are given a choice of the unit system of our mesh. Mesh data is unitless at first. The data has information on bounding box size, but doesn't know if this is in inches or millimeters, which we set here. We can verify the size of our mesh using the measures tool in the distance between two points. Now that the mesh is inside of wrap, we can begin using some of our tools. There's a wide range of tools available and broken into different tabs. Some are more commonly used than others, such as the transform body or extract features like planes and cones. You can even scan into wrap using the capture tab. You can also extract out sketches within the curves tab. Here, we can use an existing plane or create our own cutting plane by drawing on the screen. This can be split into even more planes to extract out several curves at once. With a combination of curves and extracted features, you can reverse engineer a CAD object without the need of a mesh any further. Now, when it comes to editing the mesh itself, we will primarily be within the Polygons tab. You may want to also verify what selection mode you have toggled on, so you don't accidentally select an improper amount of polygons that you wish to edit. Wrap excels at smoothly patching up holes, de-featuring, repairing the polygons, and smoothing the mesh overall. Some tools, like de-featuring, require you to select a patch of polygons first, then run the command. For simple bumps or letterings, this is a fairly quick process. You can select multiple areas at once. The D feature tool looks for surrounding triangles to each individual patch, so it won't try to take an average of all of your selections at once. Some areas, however, may not be as simple to clean. These holes at the top of the helmet look to have an infolded area, otherwise known as non-manifold. I'm going to delete the top layer of the mesh to see what may be underneath. We can see that there looks to be a layer of the scan that folded inside, which was stopping the D feature tool from running properly. I can select a section of these triangles and expand my selection via the right-click menu. The boundary option will expand my triangle selection for all connecting polygons until a boundary is met, so all of the connecting inside polygons. Once selected, I can simply hit the delete key to remove them all. I'm not too worried about these smaller floating bits because they will likely be cleaned up with some other tools that we'll run later on. With these holes, we can choose to fill them all at once or individually. In the fill single command, we have a few ways to have our edges matched and what level of hole filling we want. I often keep my setting on tangent for a smooth transition between the edges. The bridge tool lets you select on one side of the edge and then connect it to another, making larger holes easier to manage. It's also best to remove edges with high noise counts, like where the strap of this helmet is, to give you a better hole filling. Using the Fill All tool, I can adjust some of the options before clicking Apply, giving me a preview in red. If all looks well, I can click OK to confirm the command. We're getting closer to finishing our cleaning process. Since I'm going to auto-surface this mesh to create a solid, I want to make sure that there aren't any parts of the data that are noisy or just connected by a small bridge of polygons. If there are any, I can quickly delete them and then refill the holes, so that way it won't cause any issues later on. 
These kind of areas can cause troubles with laying out the NURB surfaces, so deleting any isolated patches or blobs of data is best practice. Holding down the control key and left clicking can adjust our lighting as well if we need to take a deeper look inside of a pocket or see an edge differently. To finish off the mesh, I'm going to run some mesh healing tools to remove sharp edges and floating bits of noise. The manifold command will check if the mesh has any infolded areas and remove them. Next, we can run the decimate tool to reduce our polygon count of our mesh. We can often reduce the mesh by 75 or even 90% and still maintain the same level of detail, but it'll be a fraction of the file size. The next command will be Mesh Doctor, which will detect for troublesome edges, spikes, and folded areas, and attempt to delete and repair them as well. This makes the mesh much easier to print or convert into a solid, and is almost always necessary before exporting. One of the other tools I'm going to run is a Relax command, to apply a global smoothing on the entire mesh. We could always highlight a section of the mesh if we only want a small area to be smooth instead of everything. If you don't want to run a global smoothing but still want to prepare the mesh for surfacing, we can run the Enhance Mesh tool to run a second check of the polygons and remove troublesome areas while minimally affecting the smoothness of the mesh. This is really handy to remove flat areas or other kind of sharp corners that might have trouble with auto surfacing. In the Exact Surfacing tab, we can toggle on the surfacing tools, which gives us a new set of commands. If you want to switch back to polygon editing, you'll need to use the Convert to Polygon command on the far right of this tab. In here, we can sketch out a patch network for surfacing or jump right into the auto surfacing tool to run it on our entire mesh. Enabling the auto surface tool gives you some adjustments on how the NURB patches will be laid out and the tolerance of them. For this helmet, we'll be choosing mechanical since it's not a very organic shape and increase the tolerance slightly. You can enable the interactive mode option if you want to see the patch layout and make adjustments manually before actually surfacing the mesh. Clicking Apply will again show a preview of the new surface body, and clicking OK confirms it. With our solid body bade, we can start extracting out our CAD information. With only the surface body shown, we can go to Save As and save our file as a dot step or parasolid. For the curves, we'll only show them and then save these as an IGIS. We can also, before exporting the solid, verify its accuracy by clicking on the deviation tool inside of the exact surfacing, and get a color map of how our surface matches to our mesh. Inside of SOLIDWORKS, we can go into the Insert, Features, and Imported tool and select on our .step and IGIS files we extracted from RAP. The extracted features will keep their orientation and position, but we can move them once they're inside of SOLIDWORKS if desired. At this point, all of our information is now inside of SOLIDWORKS and we can begin modeling and editing the curves or solid body further. I hope you found this video helpful. Mesh editing is a process that can be daunting at first, but with the right software can be quick and easy, giving even the roughest scans new life and workability. Please subscribe to our channel if you like more videos on scanning, printing, and SOLIDWORKS.